for me, I think the biggest thing that football taught me was how to overcome adversity. At some point in your life, you're going to have some tough times. You have to have that next play mentality. That cohesiveness and that working together, that's really something special that you can't get in a lot of other areas. When you practice that and you live that in other phases of your life, it, it, it becomes second nature because all you know how to do is fight. It's not an easy game. If it were easy, everyone would do it. You start to appreciate the, the smaller contributions that people make. You don't just look at the big one because you knew it took six or seven other guys who are unsung. And, uh, you know, you, you can't take shortcuts and be successful. Doing what they do to make it possible for the guy getting the press clippings or whatever it might be. In this game, whether it's as a coach or a player. So, um, I would certainly say that, um, you know, you definitely got uh, a very quick lesson in how to overcome adversity playing football. Welcome to another edition of Talking Ball with the Czar. I'm Emory Hunt, the Czar of the Playbook, here on the campus of Norfolk State University with head football coach Latrell Scott. Coach, I appreciate you taking time. Uh, thank you for coming, man. We appreciate having you. Well, your success is, is multi-layered from a leadership perspective, developing uh, prospects, recruiting guys. How does each one kind of yield itself and lend itself to you becoming a successful head coach? Well, I think it starts with my staff. I think when I, when I got the job here at Norfolk State University, I challenged our administration to, to surround me with the best possible people. And uh, in this business, uh, it's, it's a player-driven business and you have to have coaches that, uh, that, that, that you can surround your players with. You have to have an administration and a support staff that uh, give you the ability to be the best head coach you can be. And uh, we're turning the corner at North State because uh, of all the other people involved in our program. I just happen to be the guy who's the face of it, but uh, our, our success is really driven by a lot of the people behind the scenes. And when you're on pace to becoming this this head coach and you've been a head coach before in your younger days was this were those three things something that you wanted to seek out and, and perhaps kind of build upon it as you move forward <laughs> I, I never had had uh, any idea that I'd be a head coach I had the opportunity to be a head coach at 34 years old and was way too young and inexperienced I hadn't made enough mistakes at 34 but now at 41 uh, you know I'm kind of weathered and and beaten and bruised a little bit I've, <laughs> I've had some uh, some success and I've had some uh, situations where we hadn't been successful. So you take uh, situations from a mall and, and you learn. But like I said, the, the main thing that we're trying to do here is, is develop young men and make sure that all these guys are better when they leave us than they are when they got here. Coach, I like how mentally tough your teams are. And this goes back to Virginia State to when you were at Richmond to now here at Norfolk State. Your teams always are mentally tough. Situational football is, is key with you guys. Is that one of your pillars of success in building the program and how important is that element to have as a football team? It's very important. I mean, mental, mental toughness is, uh, is an ingredient in life, you know, more so than football. Uh, we try to put our, our, our kids in stressful situations, in the classroom, on the football field, uh, in, in practice situations, in, in winter conditioning, so that when they do hit adversity, uh, you know, they, they can manage. Our teams have fortunately always been one of the least penalized teams uh, in, in each league that we've been in is because just the way that we structure practice. You know, if, if it's third and one and we're going to jump off sides or we're going to get a penalty, to, to keep the uh, opposing team with the ball, then we're not very mentally tough. But we try to put our guys in as many adverse situations as we possibly can because, you know, today is a, is a, is a kind of microwave society. You know, it's, it's a, we want results right now generation. And, and uh, we, we have to try to create as much adversity as we possibly can so that when adversity does hit, we don't wilt. This will be your third season here as the head coach at Norfolk State. Outstanding job so far. You, you slowly have changed the culture here and you can tell how the players are playing that they're starting to buy in, they're really buying into what you guys got going on. Where are you now in your process and where do you want to see this program headed? It's time for us to get the results uh, that we're all looking for. It's year three in a program. I think year three is the year that most pro most programs usually take the next step, especially ones that, that had to be rebuilt. Uh, I look at one of my mentors and Dave Clawson and what he's been able to do at Wake Forest. You know, those guys were three and eight, three and eight, then they're, they're in their bowl eligible board and go down and win a bowl game. It's because the kids matured, they bought into the process, uh, the recruiting aspect is kind of taking hold. Our kids are, uh, are ready to, to do the things that we need to do, uh, but we, we as a coaching staff and as a team need to make sure that we're doing everything that we can possibly do to 
to take the next step. We just, we just finished spring practice, which I think was one of our better springs ever, and uh, we're looking forward to having a great summer. But uh, there, there are teams in our league, the, the ANTs and the Centrals, that uh, we've got to catch, and uh, you know, the, those guys are out there. So it's going to take a lot uh, to, to, to take the next step, but I think we're well on our way. And when you look at the differences between uh, you know, fall camp, spring camp, winter workouts, things like that, have you seen that light come on for those guys that in year three, like, okay, now they're starting to get it. And you say you kept it to yourself, but do you see that from your players? I think this spring, probably towards the end, we finally uh, took a step. Uh, we, we created some adverse situations towards the end of the spring, and, and our guys could have gone one way or another, but they took the high road. And I think our spring game was one of the best that we've had from a standpoint that the guys played the spring game. Uh, you know, a lot of guys look at the spring game as kind of a, a last practice address for rehearsal and guys don't play hard. We created situations in our spring game where the game came down to the final drive and uh, the guys in the field played as hard as they could into the whistle. Coach, we both played college ball. We know how important rivalries are and how fun it makes it. it and that's the unique part of it as opposed to the NFL professional level. And I can't come to Norfolk State without mentioning the Battle of the Bay against nearby Hampton University. How important is that rivalry and how significant are rivalries as a whole? Well, you know, I, I can speak to it, uh, you know, kind of twofold because I've been on both sides of it. You know, playing football at Hampton, I've mm -hmm. uh, been the head coach of Norfolk State. That's probably, I don't know if that's <laughs> ever been done before, but uh, it, it's always been a great football game. And, uh, you know, with, with what Coach Manor's done at Hampton, uh, he's trying to get the program turned. We're trying to get the program turned here. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to win the last two, but they've been great football games. Uh, they've been, been supported very well by the community. I think in college football, rivalry games are huge games because it gets uh, the students, it gets the community, it gets the alumni base involved. Um, you know, these, these young people, they work their tails off and they need as much support as they can possibly get. So when you have the opportunity to play a rivalry game that's, you know, separated by 15 miles, uh, you know, it, it really makes for a fun atmosphere. And we're looking forward to playing Hampton at home again this year and trying to make the Battle of the Bay fun again. Coach, one of my favorite questions I always ask every time I'm meeting up with a coach is, is about their philosophy because it's unique to each one because it's what makes you tick, it what makes you successful. So what's one piece of your philosophy uh, you, you would be willing to share with us? I think, uh, you know, I tell every parent when they, when they come on our campus or I go into the living room that my goal as a head coach is to try to make their son better at 22 than he is at 18. And I mean, be a better football player at 22, be a better person at 22 and then just be a better overall individual because uh, at the end of the day we're football coaches but we're teachers and we're mentors and uh, we need to try to make sure that, that we're developing a total product because when a young man leaves my program, whether be it he goes to the NFL, uh, whether he goes to a Fortune 500 company, or whether he goes to a normal job, or whether he's raising his, raising his family, I think it's very important for us to have made him a better person. So what we're really trying to do is uh, grow and mature and as I said, mentor and, and just make these young men better people in the process have a great time in college and win a ton of football games. And when you talk to these guys, I, I, just speaking from my personal experience, you know, I, I respected the coach that told me exactly what I needed to hear and yeah. not what I wanted to hear. Is that something that you really driving home to these guys? Yeah, we're, we're in the middle of exit interviews right now. So there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot of real conversation going on right now. I think one thing that our guys would say is that uh, coach keeps it real, but uh, I think they know that we care. Um, and you know, it's 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 I'm wrong if I'm not not being up front with them because if I don't tell them, who's going to tell them? Uh, their, their parents have entrusted them to be here with me. So uh, right, wrong, or indifferent, we're going to tell them what's right. Football across you know many different areas from playing, coaching, administrating, it teaches you a lot. And I'm pretty sure we all have a lot of life lessons we learn from the game. What would be the biggest thing you think football taught you? Football is real life. You know, you win, you lose. Uh, you have success, you have failure, you can't do it by yourself. Uh, you know, I think there's so many things that it just teaches you. It teaches you that, uh, you know, Saturday can be a terrible day, but the sun's going to come up on Sunday regardless. I think there's just so many parallels with football and life. Uh, you know, I think athletes that play individual sports have a little bit different take on it because, you know, in life you have to depend on people. In football you have to depend on people. I think, uh, you know, some of my best friends in the world I met on the football field or, or in some type of athletic arena so I think it's uh, it's the ultimate life tool and uh, you know it just teaches you that, that it's, it's survival you know because as I said you know I've had some pretty bad Saturdays but right wrong and different the sun comes up on Sunday and the, the cool part about it is that you know you embrace those those challenges and, yeah. and football definitely tells you how to embrace a challenge that you that you will face and another unique part about what you have going on is that you played in HBCU mm -hmm. you coach at an HBCU in addition to coaching everywhere you yeah. know and 
I think that's a unique part about this entire college football landscape is that there's a sub-segment of colleges that people don't necessarily know about. What would you say is the most unique thing or how unique is coaching at an HBCU and how significant is it for you? Well, I, I think the, the best thing about HBCU football is it gives some kids opportunities that wouldn't have opportunities and it also gives kids second chances when they have failures at other places. Um, you know, you have to credit a lot of the HBCU presidents and athletic directors because what they're doing now is you're starting to see uh, Jerry Mack and um, you know Terry Sims and Mike London and guys like that that, that have non-HBCU backgrounds that are coming back to HBCU football and uh, I think we're creating a great subset of football coaches to go along with all the legendary coaches you know from the past you know you've got you know Buddy Pugh who came back to the MEAC from South Carolina years ago and people didn't really understand what Buddy was doing and Buddy's kind of the dean of, uh, of the MEAC right now but the biggest thing for me is you know having been at the places that I was fortunate enough to be um, I, I look back and I think that you know the kids at Norfolk State deserve the same things that the kids at Richmond and James Madison and Tennessee and UVA got uh, from their coaches and you know there's just a little bit of me that, that thinks that uh, these kids need me a little bit more than the kids at UVA and Richmond did. I mean we had great kids at every stop but I think some of the kids that I had at the other places you know were a little bit more squared away prior, prior to, to getting to those types of universities and, and here uh, it's a more nurturing situation for some guys that may need a little bit more than other guys in, uh, in major college football do. You know, if I was to do it all over again, being a 17-year-old senior, what would I get or why would I choose uh, Norfolk State? I think the thing that most of our guys uh, end up picking Norfolk State, it, it comes down to uh, kind of a big fish in a small pond theory. You know, when we go out, we recruit the best. We don't just recruit the guys that are left over. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason that we end up getting guys because when they come here, they feel like it's a nurturing environment. They feel like professors are going to know their name. They feel like they can walk down the street and President Moore is going to say, Hi, John Smith, how are you? Our, our, athletic, Miller, our athletic director, Marty Miller, is going to be able to say hello and know you by name. And uh, when you go to class, professors are going to treat you like a student, you know, not just as an athlete. So it's, uh, it's an environment that uh, we have a full commitment from our campus community to make our make our student athletes better and what with what we're investing in the athletic program with our facilities and and stadiums and things of that sort I think it makes it a great environment and uh, you know our coaching staff is another reason I think we have a very dynamic coaching staff guys with with a lot of backgrounds you know NFL football BCS football guys that have coached all over the place and uh, you know the, the the last reason that people you know should pick Norfolk State is because you know we're 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 moving upward and uh, we're on, we're, we're trending in a positive direction and it's a great train to jump on right now. I definitely see that because a lot of times last last year watching you guys play defensively, you were on point, yeah. you never really got blown out of a game so to speak. Guys were in it throughout the course the course of the game and walking around campus here, taking a look at the facilities. I was impressed this is my first time here on campus. Stadium is nestled in campus which is yeah. huge uh, for turning out and a lot of great facilities, buildings. So I'm impressed. I think you guys are heading in the right direction. I wish you the best luck moving forward. We appreciate it. You know, the other thing that, you know, lastly, we've got five seniors. You know, we've got wow. five seniors in next year's <laughs> class. So we've totally revamped this thing. So we're looking forward to having a great year this year and many more years to come.